how do you define your uh, moral or civic responsibility as a developer? Well, you, you all know that you're making an impact that goes beyond your property line, right? They're really concentric circles of responsibility to your property line, to your block, your street, your neighborhood, and the city as a whole. Um, how do you think about that? So um, I, I agree 100%. I mean, you, if you're going to be successful in this business long term, you have to think past the individual building uh, that you're building. You know, we, we as a company spend an enormous amount of time thinking about, as we said, design, spending more money to make buildings look great, thinking about public spaces in our developments, thinking about affordable housing in and around our developments. Cities can't be successful. We could build luxury condos forever, but if we don't have affordable housing for people, not only affordable housing, but workforce housing, for people that work and live in New York City, the city's not gonna be successful, and ultimately we're not gonna sell any more luxury condos. So, you know, I think it's, you do it because it's the right thing, and you do it because it's, it's good business. Um, our company was started, the foundation of, of the business was on affordable housing, development and, and financing of affordable housing, and it's still a critical part of everything we do today. So I think any developer um, that thinks that they're gonna be in this business long term um, really at some point has to focus on, on just more than, than the building that they're doing. I think art has also become a huge part of development. Um, you know, at Hudson Yards, we are, uh, we're creating an incredible public space in the middle of our buildings. It's the first half is six acres alone. That's bigger than Bryant Park. <coughs> and when we thought about what to do in that public space, I agree, that's a, that's a huge responsibility. That's not just decorating, that's, that's a responsibility because that's gonna be public open space available to everyone in the city forever. And so we wanted to create some of the best public open space that existed anywhere around the world. And we traveled around the world to look at squares and parks and plazas. And you know, we think we, we brought the best of those ideas and we thought about where in New York people go just to see what's there and we thought about Rockefeller Center, and why do people come to Rockefeller Center? To see the skating rink, to see the Christmas tree. And we, we, we decided that we were gonna put some sculpture piece art in the center of this plaza. And we went around the world and we interviewed designers and, and sculptors, and we said to them, we want to create a 365 day a year Christmas tree. So that every single person that comes to New York has to come here. And uh, we wound up selecting this incredible young designer, uh, Thomas Heatherwick, based in London. And he has designed, you may have seen, we, we revealed it a couple months ago, uh, he has designed something that's currently called the Vessel, which looks like this, um, and it's, it is 15 stories high. Uh, it's costing $180 million to produce. And it's basically, it looks like a honeycomb web of, of stairs that the public is gonna be able to access and climb and run and view from all angles what's happening around the city. Is there an elevator in the center? There is a, an elevator because there's a handicapped elevator and so everyone should have access to it. Um, so, but, but the idea is not that you use the elevator, the idea is that you use the stairs and, and be a part of it. And I, I really do think that this is gonna be the 365 day a year Christmas tree that's so unique that everybody that comes to New York is gonna come see it. I'll tell you a funny story about the construction of this $180 million piece of sculpture. So it's being produced in a factory um, outside of Venice, Italy. And uh, <clears throat> it's these enormous steel pieces, copper clad. And uh, you know, we, I've been over there a couple of times and we've seen, we watch it on, on webcam being produced over there. And we figured out how big these pieces have to be so that we can get them here. The logistics of getting them here from the factory onto the boat, the boat through the canals and all that stuff into New York Harbor, unload at Newark, onto the trucks, close the bridge, down the West Side Highway, and these pieces start to get here and they're piling up on the Western rail yards. And so I, one day I'm down at Hudson Yards and I knew we were supposed to start assembling them and I see all these pieces piled up on the west side, so I go in the back and I said, why are, why are the pieces still over there? And they say, well, we figured out how to build it in Italy, <laughs> ship it, 
through the canals, across the ocean, into Newark, onto the truck, across the bridge, down West Side Highway. We can't get it across 11th Avenue. <laughs> Apparently, all that logistics, nobody checked the weight load limit on 11th Avenue, which is technically a bridge. And so now we are supporting 11th Avenue so that we can bring these pieces from the Western Rail Yards to the Eastern Rail Yards. <laughs> but it will be incredible to watch. So over the coming months, you'll see the vessel uh, come up out of the ground. Ian, you wanted to jump in on the um, civic responsibility question? It's so funny, I forgot the question. I was thinking about 11th Avenue. Mm. I, I can only speak for myself. I'm uh, you know, only interested, and the only thing that matters to me is doing a great product, doing something really special, doing something really unique. It's what interests me, it's what I, 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 lo I love to do. Uh, it has to make money, or you won't get another opportunity to do it again. But you know, I, I think doing a great product is pleasing to everybody that looks at it uh, and sees it and happens to live there or, or, or work there. So I think the responsibility is to do something really great and really original and really innovative. And to try to do that first, uh, instead of chasing the money, uh, our, our approach is the money will come as a natural consequence of, of doing something great. And I think if, I wouldn't be interested in, in building a, a terrible project and, and making all the money in the world. It's just not what makes me get up in the morning. Harry, you mentioned design and architecture as one of the uh, main qualities of, uh, and the intensification of that, and one of the main qualities of development the last 20 years. And I wonder, to a developer, why does that actually matter? Why does it matter if the architecture is good? Well, to me it matters because I want to be involved in something or something great. Uh, and I want to do something special. Um, I'm not doing architecture um, to get a premium price or because it's where the market is. I'm doing it because I love it. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I really enjoy the process. And I really enjoy the treachery of working with a non-corporate architect uh, um, and, and, and underwriting all those risks involved. Um, period, that, that's the virtue. Uh, and uh, I think as a consequence of that, you will get a premium yeah. because you're making more of an effort, you're spending more money, it's taking more time, you're building perhaps more expensively, maybe you live a little bit even impractically, and people see that and you get a premium for it. But it, it's like, to me, it's a perversion of the process to think about the money first and then back into the product. You have to do the product and the money comes yeah. as a consequence of that. In the, in the, in the few condominiums you know, that I've done, we've done two or three hundred percent what the current market was at that time. And we didn't underwrite it at that. We underwrote it at what the current market was. But you hope that, that, that people you know, will appreciate it. Uh, and, um, not interested in getting every square inch or gaming the system to be able to build as much as I, I, I possibly could. I think if the product is great, you'll get a premium for it. In the same way, Apple products uh, don't have a great share of the market, but because they're so great and they're so original and so unique to get a premium, and their things sell for so much more than everybody else's does. Yeah. Harry, did you have a comment about why it matters that that architecture, why you, you spend the money and the energy and the uh, treacherousness of, of dealing with artists when you don't have to? Oh, yes, I have an answer, of course. <laughs> um, however, first, I'd, um, I, I'd like to say that I think um, from what I've heard uh, and uh, many of the conversations uh, over, the, over the years, that there's a, um, a prejudice uh, on the part of the public and or uh, the critic uh, and or people for 
the developer and development. And I think that before you ask like the next question, you kind of have to think about that a little bit. Of course, I've been around uh, a little longer than perhaps anybody else on the panel, uh, perhaps. Um, and I remember, <laughs> and I remember, and I think uh, all of you do too, uh, the tremendous outcry of stop Lincoln Center. We don't want to have a Lincoln Center. I remember the Bella Opsig. I remember the absolute intolerance and the marching uh, against Lincoln Center. I think there's probably not a day that goes by in any of the publications where there is not an outcry about the shadow that's being uh, cast on Central Park. Even though the building is on 34th Street and the East River, it's the shadow that will be on Central Park. So there's this inherent prejudice that uh, the developer is not even uh, a wolf in sheep's clothing, that he's worse than a wolf and almost a predator. And I think that you really want to stop and think for a second because I've suggested to you twice that the best developers are the artists. They're the ones who found East Hampton, not my colleagues. They're not the ones who discovered the south of France. Is the artist. Uh, the development community these days, and I have seen 50 years of development, 55, almost 60 years of development, is so enlightened that nobody, uh, whether it's an amateur or a very professional and a profound company, is building without an amazing amount of knowledge, resources, intellect, purpose and objectives. And all of that is public responsibility. 